Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Nico McCarty, and I went to school at the University of Iowa. Is anyone here from Iowa? <laughs> All right. Uh, small state, but we're very strong. Uh, so now I study at Imperial College London. Um, I'm a UK Fulbrighter, uh, and I study kind of this new field called metabolic engineering. Um, and I thought since I only have five minutes, instead of going into a bunch of scientific details and all these things that most of you probably don't care about, um, I would instead tell, uh, tell what I think is a really interesting story about this, this new field, and then I'll kind of tie it in with my project at the end. Um, so I only have one slide. Um, and uh, I kind of, the story will tell you about why these two images are connected. Um, so basically, I'll start just by saying that, um, so it was, the, it was the late 60s in China, um, and the Chinese government got a request from the Vietnamese government. Um, the, the Vietnamese government wanted China to start looking into uh, treatments for malaria. And if anybody knows anything about malaria, uh, you would know that it's the, it's killed more humans than any other disease in history. It's been around with us for thousands of years. Um, in 2015, the WHO said that over 200 million people were infected with malaria and over 400,000 died from malaria. So uh, one of the problems with malaria is that it keeps coming back again and again. So you can get it multiple times. So there are, there are villages and, and populations where people are basically chronically infected with malaria. And so it, it, basically people can't work and it affects the economy of these places because they can't work consistently because they're always sick with malaria. Um, so the Vietnamese government wanted to tackle this, so they asked the Chinese government for help. And in 1969, they brought on board this scientist uh, by the name of uh, Tu Yu Yu. She was a Chinese, uh, Chinese scientist. And basically, she joined this team. It was kind of the secret project called Project 523. And it was called Project 523 because there were 523 scientists working on the project. And basically, they, they thought maybe, the, maybe there's a treatment for malaria in natural products. So like tons of our medicines come from natural products like plants and things. So they thought if we, if we just find plants and isolate compounds from plants, eventually we'll find something that has anti-malarial properties and inhibits this parasite um, or this plasmodium. Uh, so they're working. And Professor Tu Yu Yu was the first person to find this plant, um, which is um, called A. annua, um, and basically isolated a compound from, from this plant called artemisinin. And artemisinin was found to be an extremely potent anti-malarial uh, chemical. And it's actually one of the most effective anti-malarial drugs to this day. So people still take artemisinin, and it's really effective. Professor Tu won the 2015 Nobel Prize in medicine. Uh, but before she won that, uh, nine years before she won that, there was this paper um, from the University of California, Berkeley, a professor there, uh, by the name of Jay Kiesling, and he's kind of one of the pioneers in this field of metabolic engineering. And what he said is that there's this global crisis where we can't produce enough artemisinin to treat everybody that has malaria, uh, because this plant grows like seasonally. It doesn't grow everywhere in the world. It has to grow in certain climates. People cut these plants down. They isolate it. There's a chemical purification process. It's extremely expensive. So, so people like the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation can't really scale up the distribution of something like artemisinin, even though it's really effective. So this guy at, the, at UC Berkeley said, what if we could engineer yeast? What if we could change the genome of yeast, the same yeast that's used to brew our beers, and we could make them, we could rewire their metabolic pathways to turn sugar into something like artemisinin? Um, and he succeeded in 2006 after something like $50 million in funding um, a company called Amiris, a French company, now owns the rights to that strain of yeast, and they manufacture basically the world's supply of artemisinin. It's, it's like a thousand times cheaper than conventional harvesting of artemisinin. Um, and it basically jump-started jump this whole field that I'm now involved in at Imperial College called metabolic engineering. So what I do is I, I change the genome of living cells like yeast or like E. coli or Bacillus subtilis or cyanobacterias to essentially turn very cheap starting materials like glucose um, or like, like biomass waste, so things like cellulose, which we don't really use for anything, um, and, and essentially turn cells into factories, living factories that spit out what you want. Um, so uh, this is now a whole uh, field, and yeah, I hope you enjoyed my story. Thanks.